Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. Today I'm working in the shop. I have a piece of some poly board and a bunch of shunts and I'm building a pretty cool project today. This is going to go on the off-grid ranch and this is part of upgrading my batteries to the Calb CA180 cells. What I have here is a piece of 3 8 inch by 3 inch aluminum bus bar and it's polished nice and clean. All the you know, this one's a little bit beat up, but it's all nice and clean, so there's no oxidation on here. I have some shunts. These are 500 amp, 50 millivolt shunts, and uh, I have five of those, as well as another shunt, which is a 50 amp, 50 millivolt shunt. And I'm going to set these up on this piece of poly board, and this is going to mount under my inverters on my off-grid setup. So I laid out already another piece of this poly board and drew it all up, but this piece was a little bit small when I had these shunts on here. It was a little bit off in size, it hung over the top. Uh, so I got a different piece, this is half inch poly board, and uh, this other one that I have here, this is three quarter inch. So I'm going to be able to recess this piece of bus bar in here, three eighths of an inch, so that these shunts will sit flat on here. And uh, I have five shunts. One of them is going to go to my battery bank. Um, so I'll probably have it set up something like this. So I'll probably have this shunt going to my battery bank. This one going to one of my inverters. This one going to the other inverter. This one going to my solar power coming in. And then this one will be for a possible future battery bank or future expansion, not sure yet. And then the little shunt is going to be for all of my controls. And this will allow me to measure what power is going where and more accurately log what's using power. And it will allow me with my PLC to calculate daily kilowatt hour usage, battery capacity, all sorts of awesome statistics like that. So these are going to get mounted down and uh, I'll show you guys along how I build this and uh, go through the process. So alrighty, I got this routered out and I hit it with a bit of sandpaper. It may look a little dirty, that's just from the sandpaper, but this fits nice and snug in here now. Nice and smooth and flat. So now I can measure out and get my shunt set up how I was talking about earlier. And this is actually going to come out really, really nice. I mean, these shunts are pretty much exactly the width. And then what my plan is, I'm going to router out a little bit of a pocket here and get another chunk of this 3-inch bus bar. And that's going to come out and have my lugs that the, then the wires will go to the inverters and stuff like that. So this is progress so far. More as it happens. Alrighty, so I got this routed out a bit more. Uh, I made some pockets in here and I'm going to put another piece of this 3 inch bus bar like I was talking about coming out and then these shunts I'll drill and tap this piece of aluminum and then bolt these down into there and I'll get bolts that are just long enough to go through the shunt and then through the 3 8 bus bar but not stick out the back so that on the back this is all totally insulated and like I was saying I'll get a short piece of bus bar with a lug on here and uh, that'll be where the wires connect onto. And then in case you're wondering how I'm gonna connect this, I have uh, two screws here on the shunt. Now what a shunt is, in case you didn't know, this is essentially a resistor. And it's a fixed resistance that correlates to a certain voltage drop at a certain amount of current. So if you're running 500 amps through here, it's gonna drop 50 millivolts and it'll be proportional. So for example, at 100 amps, it'll be 10 millivolts. And that's measured on these two screws. Now, I'm gonna connect on to these screws. Um, the side on the bus bar will be the common, and then the side on opposite of the bus bar will be my actual sense lead. I'm gonna tie this into a PLC, which I'll show you now. So this here is the Click PLC inside of my battery management control panel. This is a thermocouple module and I've actually made a video a while back on how I used a thermocouple module uh, to measure current. Uh, link in a card in the top corner. But essentially I have four thermocouple inputs here and they're actually completely isolated from each other. So I have TC1 plus and TC1 minus, TC2 plus, TC2 minus, and so on and so forth. Now, I said a minute ago these are isolated from each other, but one thing that I found interesting in my other system is if there's a voltage difference between the two, like if they're not common to each other at 
reference to the same voltage, uh, you actually get some really interesting measurements in the PLC and it'll seem like it's wandering and uh, that's not very good if you're building a, a very robust system. So that's why all the shunts are bolted onto the same bus bar. So in theory, they're all at the same potential. They only have a minor deviation based on the amount of current running through the shunts. So yeah, they'll connect onto this, four of them will at least. And then I have another one of these shunt modules um, down on the ranch. And I'm going to install that in this PLC. And that is going to go in this full battery management control panel. And yeah, this battery management control panel is a work in progress. I've been wiring it up slowly but surely. And uh, this is where all the balance leads will connect on to. I have some relays here. These are interface relays and they're all tied together because the common is connected to the battery terminals and then the switched leg is essentially going to go to my BMS balancer and that is going to allow me to turn off the balancing function for testing purposes so I can see if there's any drift. And then I have my relay modules that I put together in the video called Ultimate BMS Using Relays. And uh, one other thing I'm going to put in here is a regular BMS that monitors each one of the cells. And that's instead of running all the power through it, it's going to send a signal into the PLC and say, hey, either the batteries are overcharged or they're undercharged and that will then allow me to run through all these relays, check the voltage, see what's going on and where there's an issue and then from there I can either determine whether I need to turn off solar chargers, inverters, so on and so forth. So that's the progress. If you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to subscribe for more.